Hello YouTube, today we're adding an AEV snorkel to our overland build. Before we get started, full disclaimer, I'm just an idiot that follows directions, not a pro installer. This video is to help you decide if you might want to tackle this or take it to a shop to be done. So people often ask, why add a snorkel? Well, there's two main reasons, usually dust and water. For me, it's about adding a little bit of insurance in water obstacles. Take a look at this video. A factory JK takes on a water crossing a little faster than he should, hitting the water at a speed much too high. The result is water spraying up into the engine bay, deflecting off the hood and into the engine intake. Now let's rewind that again and take another look. Okay, stop there. Notice how the force of entering the water starts to spray a rooster tail on each side of the Jeep that goes higher than the Jeep itself. What most don't think about is the same force of water that's also spraying just as hard on the inside of the tire, forcing water up into that engine bay where it hits the hood, deflects back down, and possibly enters the air intake. Anyway, we're installing the snorkel on a 2015 JK Rubicon Hard Rock. It's outfitted with a goby rack, and you'll see why this is important later on in the video. Let's get into it. Let's talk parts. AEV provides two engine bay brackets. These are identical in size, but have different bolt patterns. A bag of hardware, stickers, and the hose clamp for the ram scoop. And then an A-pillar bracket, or a goby bracket, which is pretty much the same bracket as the one that goby sells. Last but not least is the hood trim ring. This will cover up all of your ugly cutting mistakes. Tools you'll need, a rivet tool, a drill with a one and three quarter inch hole saw, masking tape, silicone, touch up paint. I use the color match Mopar, one eighth and five thirty second drill bits, a cutting wheel or saw, a wax or grease pencil to mark, scissors to cut the template out, something to measure. I use the caliper, a center punch, and then something to prop the hood up so you can cut and work. AEV provides a template that you'll need to cut out and place exactly 23 millimeters from the start of the curve on your hood for the hood latch. If you have an AEV hood, just forget about all of this because the cut's already there for you. Once you measure, place and tape the template on the hood. Using your marking pencil, trace the template. You can't see it in this video here because my grease pencil is black, but it's there. Take your center punch and tap the drill points on the template. Remove the template and mask off the area you traced with tape. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect, but just match it with the template back up when you're done to double check. Open and support the hood in preparation for cutting. Using the 1 8 bit, drill pilot holes where you tapped earlier. Remember, there are two layers of metal on your hood. You need to drill through both of them.
I did a quick sanity check with the hole saw to ensure alignment, and we're good. Now cut your holes. I'm not gonna lie, it's an odd feeling to destroy a beautiful powered LMG hood. Notice as I drill, I'm cutting a little high into the tape. That's okay, there's some margin of error here that that trim piece will cover. Again, you must drill through both levels. One more sanity check. Open the hood and check out your cuts. Notice on mine, I caught some of the insulation on the second hole. I ended up removing the push pins and folding back that layer of insulation. Then with the hood down and supported again, use your cutoff wheel to cut the rest out. You'll have to open the hood to get to the bottom layer. Something that I don't show in the video is the second round of inside cutting. Because the snorkel comes in flat, you'll need to take off another quarter inch on the inside so that when the hood is closed, you'll have an even pass through. You're going to want to spend a little time smoothing out your cut. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Then using your touch-up paint, cover the exposed surfaces to prevent rust. While that dries, take a 10mm socket and remove the two bolts holding the coolant line in place. Then loosen the hose clamp and pull back the intake tube from the airbox. The airbox has four latches. Flip them and pull the attached breather hose straight off. Let's take a second and look how the JK is set up. The factory JK comes with a small snorkel, which allows it to ford water higher than most vehicles, right off the lot. The shroud prevents most water from entering, but there's still an open side that water can find its way into if it's moving fast enough. Remove the air filter, and you get a good look at how the flow comes in through the snorkel, down into the bottom, up through the air filter, into the intake. The air box has four holes in the bottom. Three of them are partially blocked by the mounting pegs. A tiny drain hole is at the lowest point. Now at this point, you're probably gonna to wanna to make a decision whether you wanna seal this all off completely or leave some holes to drain extra water. There's pros and cons to both. I'm choosing to seal the entire box. Now we wanna remove the air box. Be very careful here, don't do what I did. I removed the air box once before when installing my dual battery kit, so it probably weakened my pegs a little bit and I didn't notice. But I pull towards the camera and snap off two legs. Make sure you pull straight up.
Here you can see where they snapped off. And now I have to pull them out. Now I need to break out the JB Weld and put the legs back into place, which adds to my install time. While that's setting, time to install the brackets on the snorkel. All of these should be loosely tightened so that there's some play during the final fit. You can see the two hole patterns so that you can't screw it up. At this point, I wanted to prep the area and loosen the attachment points. We will use the two rearmost points, one by the fuse box and one by the battery. My Genesis dual battery kit also uses one of these same points, so use caution here that it doesn't slide when you let that bolt loose. With the airbox mostly set, you need to drill out the factory snorkel rivets and remove it. They ended up spinning and cutting their way through the plastic. It actually widened the hole, so you'll see that I added washers later when I installed a new one. Here are the washers I added. While this airbox is out, coat the entire mating area with as much silicone as you can, because once this is back in, you're never going to be able to reach these places again. I used nearly an entire tube of silicone to make sure I coated the inside and outside where the snorkel met the airbox. Yes, this looks kind of shoddy, but the JB Weld will dry, and it will set, and no one will see the underside of the airbox. All that matters is that it's sealed and it works. Now install the whole unit back into the Jeep. Bolt down the engine bay bolts. Here's a look at the airbox, covered in silicone. After it sets, I'll likely come back and add a little bit more. Now back to the A-pillar bolts. The bottom one caught just with a little bit of effort, but the top one required me to actually push against the wall of the garage to get enough force to make it catch. I switched to hand tools because this is a tight fit and I didn't want to put too much pressure on the bolt head and snap it off. Then lower the hood for a test fit. Line up the trim ring to see where it should sit. Tape it into place. There should be about 1 8 inch gap above the snorkel. Mark your holes, prop the hood, and support it for drilling. Rivet the trim in place, and you're nearly done. Sit the scoop on the top with the clamp and tighten it down. And that's it, you're done. Congratulations on your new snorkel. Be sure to subscribe for our upcoming Expedition West series.